So, hello everyone. Um, so my name is Johan Theodoro. I give you a talk today with the title Groovy 2.5 Update. Actually, this is more a talk about the recent 2.4 versions, the upcoming 2.5 version, and a bit about 2.6 as well. It's a bit a mix. Because originally when I give in this talk, I thought by now we would have 2.5 only and, <laughs> and not so many 2.4s, but Paul was very busy with releasing 2.4 versions, <laughs> so things moved around a bit. Um, I'm from the company Canoe, and uh, our slogan is deliver end user happiness. I mean, what end user happiness is, that depends, of course, on the user a bit. Uh, some people like nice UIs, other people like other things, for example, Lego parts or something like that. We try to fulfill that. Um, as was mentioned today already, I, I like to repeat, uh, we also give uh, Groovy support from our company. So um, if your company wants some training or wants actually some coding help or anything like that, uh, or maybe just give us a, just uh, something to work on, we, we do all of it. <clears throat> so let's start. Um, who here knows the canonical uh, IST transformation? Only a few. So, uh, in, for those that don't know it, imagine you wanted a, to write a class, have, uh, I mean, or getting the setters and getters that comes for free in Groovy. Uh, you also want hash code, you want a string, you want equals. Canonical is doing that for you. Also, it's giving you a constructor for this, which is here a double constructor. We have a system called uh, meta annotations that allows you to put together several annotations in and give it a, a new name. So we have ex actually a to string annotation. We have an equals uh, and an equals and hash code annotation, and those together are then canonical. Well, sorry, together with the tuple constructor annotation. <clears throat> the result is that you can use something like this. At canonical is not new; it's just rewritten. Rewritten. This meta annotation system is called the annotation collector. Um, you have now more control what you can do with it, what you want to have in there, what parts of other annotations you want to uh, transfer to your new annotation. I don't want to go too much in detail about this. But everyone who had, for example, to do things with uh, uh, Spring and JPA and all knows how Buffer Summit is to have dozens of annotations on your classes. So with, with the annotation collectors, you can just make one annotation out of that, uh, one standard annotation, and then use this one instead of your many. The compiler will, uh, will uh, it's, it's like, a, like a macro, more or less. It will just put it in there as if the, those annotations itself would be there. <coughs> We made some changes to our tuple constructor, which a tuple constructor I mentioned before already, it just gives you a constructor with one field per property. So if you have one property, like this person has a first name, you have a one parameter to your constructor. If you have first name, last name, you would have two parameters. But you can now uh, give uh, transformations on what goes in, like automatically transform it to lower string or to upper string, things like those. Basically code that would normally go in a constructor. And of course, if you don't give in any um, parameters, you would get a failure. Because uh, or if, if you would give in a null first name, for example. The insert here would, would ensure it, um, that it's failing. It, it's like a precondition in this case. Uh, for those not knowing, the cert in Groovy is not ex exactly the same as the cert in Java. It's uh, always enabled, so it will always fail if the condition doesn't apply. 
and it will make a transformation of the argument to a boolean. So you can transform a string to a boolean. You can transform everything to a boolean in Groovy. We have special logic for that, but I'm not going to explain here <laughs> because of time reasons. I advise other talks for that. <clears throat> So a tuple constructor will, would create not only the, the ones for first name, last name, and age in this case, it would also support default arguments like using now for a string, using zero for an integer, and then you get uh, quite a row of uh, constructors. But only uh, if you want... Um, only if you want to. You can control it with the defaults. I think that's an error, actually. I think this should be false. Sorry about that. <laughs> There's also a map constructor. So you use it similar to the tuple constructor like before, but it's, it's uh, following uh, map logic, which you can see up here in, in the uh, new author, where you can give in first name, last name, book name, and such things. This is the using almost the same uh, syntax as the uh, maps in Groovy. That's why it's called uh, map constructor here. And again, now you, the, the new part here is actually that you can now give in, uh, in this pre part, uh, part code that, goes in the, that would go in the constructor normally. So you're not forced to make a constructor. You can have multiple constructors where it all contain this code without repeating yourself, without delegating to each other. You don't have to can. You can. You don't have to uh, take care of that. <clears throat> we have also an annotation called autoclone, and in here uh, you can uh, exclude and include, uh, include and exclude fields, uh, properties, if you want to. Uh, new is that now uh, these excludes are checked by the compiler. So if you typed no, I want no surname, and you accidentally write surname, then you get now a failure at compile time that this property does not exist. That's new. Then in, um, we have also a nice annotation called add immutable, uh, making class immutable. <laughs> Basically, it gives it the annotation immutable, it checks all the properties, do I use here classes that are immutable? Uh, it's providing usually uh, some, some constructors and all that. But I can control that. I can override, for example, uh, do I want to include super properties? Do I want uh, the equals and hash code to default? Or do I want to have some special logic in here? So I can all override this if I want to. And new here is the, I think it was the include super properties part is the most new, because add immutable exists already for quite a while. It's, it's uh, to, to summarize, so far we have done many, many small improvements that did go in the recent 2.4 releases. Uh, here a bit and there a bit, always in, um, communication with our users that find out, oh, wouldn't it be nice if you could control this a little bit more here or do something a bit more here to, to have a more smooth experience about those things. Sorry? Uh, what was the new one? <laughs> Sorry? Oh, yeah, sorry, of course, the inheritance, that it's now, yeah. So a person uh, is not immutable, but I, um, mm -hmm. that's wrong. <laughs> Actually, Paul, what was it now, new, the, with, the, with the hierarchy? I don't, it's, it's, uh, the one I looked up is wrong. That wasn't what I wanted to say. What was it that was new? The hierarchy was new. So you're, the fact that athlete is extending person. 
But this was possible before or not? No. Really? It, would, it wasn't, it was a, uh, before you wouldn't end up with an immutable object. Ah. I was not checking the super properties, and but we had to had to extend object, right? Really? Um, it, it automatically extends. I, I, I think it actually prohibited extension. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sorry I looked this up wrong. So I have to ask the one who did actually merge this one and ex and uh, implemented this part. <laughs> what was it exactly? Yeah, because I did remember it wrong. But if I have the reference here, I can ask. <laughs> so before uh, this was apparently not possible. Actually, I thought it was possible. I <laughs> learned something new just now myself. That's interesting. Um, so the new is that uh, now I can extend the class in my immutable. Before this was not possible. <clears throat> uh, also new is that now optional is a possible uh, variant. And uh, did we decide on if um, the optional is uh, valid on the generic parameter of the optional. So if you do an optional with a date, then the compiler will complain while with a string it works, because string is a known immutable class. Then we have also a nice transformation called auto-implement. Uh, who here works with the Eclipse IDE? Wow, that's not many. <laughs> So one thing I really liked in Eclipse before I changed um, <laughs> uh, was that I could write uh, a class that implemented an interface, for example, or something, and I didn't have to provide the implementation right away. I just could start using it. And if I was calling the method, then I was getting uh, usually exceptions or defaults, but it was compiling already. I could do something. So when I didn't use the method, nothing would happen, and I could gradually implement stuff. Auto implement is doing something similar. It doesn't go the exception way, but it ensures that every unimplemented method will return something and exist. So with auto implement, I can already ensure that my class is complete, even though it doesn't do the right thing yet. This is uh, not thought necessarily as a final implementation step. This is a transition step. <laughs> this is to help you with prototyping. This is not... I, I, I wouldn't recommend this in uh, the final production code. <laughs> but if you are starting to implement a feature, you can go pretty fast with auto-implement. It helps you a lot. You, but if you prefer the exception way, you can do that too. You can control what exception is thrown and even the message if you want to. And you can uh, also give some code in there for, for uh, dates or log you can call a logger or whatever. Um, who knows grep in Groovy? Okay. So for those not knowing, which is three quarters, <laughs> grab is a way to get libraries and uh, make them available to your compilation unit. That means here in this case, for example, I tell the shell, get me Guava 19, version 19.0, and then I can just import the, the BMAP from it and use it. At, uh, normally, this is an annotation with at grab in uh, Groovy code. Uh, in the Groovy shell, uh, you may um, you have to see every execution of the command is is a, it's like a new script, and we do some special stuff to transfer imports and other things. Uh, but that mean that mean it's not easy with the at grab to work there. And for this, we have the at grab command now with the Column grab and makes it automatically available to all following code in the shell. Then um, we have a transformation called 
a delegate, which is normally used on uh, properties uh, to allow you to, uh, well, to, to shorten your code to um, a typical example is uh, a typical example is, for example, you make a class and you have a property that is, for example, a map, and you write a delegate on it, and nothing further. But your class automatically has all the getter, uh, the get methods, and the set methods from from the map automatically, and will access the map. Uh, if you want to have more control, the, we we have annotations for what methods are, should be should be used and such, but with uh, a delegate on uh, on getters. Uh, we can, for example, <coughs> we can restrict. Uh, we, we can more control where we get the object that we uh, apply the delegation onto. So if you don't want to have a property, but you have a getter that is actually producing the delegate, maybe every time new, or maybe it's a database context with getting data via JPA or whatever, you can use this and get always the actual data with a delegate. So basically, the string that is re returned here will be the instance we delegate to. And you don't have to explicitly call in. In short, you save the get name call, which doesn't look like so much, but uh, there can be a lot of code in there. And if you make a de uh, if you want to make a DSL, that, that can help you also a lot. Uh, let me. Is somebody interested in uh, JAXB, or can I? Then I just go over it. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, time constraints. <laughs> um, for the command line, we have a, for the command line interface, we have a builder, and we have now actually support for an annotation-based system. Before, uh, it was more a um, Java, uh, sorry, a, um, a builder system, I would say, fluent API in in terms of Java more, and um, with this, we can automatically map options that are supposed to be available on the command line directly to, to, to methods uh, on, a, uh, on an interface that describes what your interface on the command line is supposed to be. Uh, you need some kind of description if you want to produce a help message, for example, uh, or just list me all available options and, and such things. So, for example, before you had this uh, command line builder and then with long short, long options and uh, short options and all that. This is all um, now reduced with the annotation version that you can just say, oh, uh, this creator interface is my specification for the, for, for the command line and that's what is supported. And then uh, I can get the options directly from there. Uh, we have a new method called tab, which um, who knows the method with in Groovy? Okay, half half, I would say. So the idea with with is uh, I have an instance, I do dot with on it, and then I can manipulate the, the, the instance. It's like your implicit this is now this instance. So in this case, New person provides me the instance, and then I can do, do set the name on the person, set the age on the person. And um, if I then wanted to call a method on, uh, on the final result, I had to return it, it is the implicit uh, parameter that will hold the instance of, of the person. Um, many people don't like this return it, which is why they say, Let's make a new method that has tap and then returns the instance. Uh, we changed with that it can return uh, this, the, the instance as well. You can control this now uh, with a Boolean parameter if you want to. 
with it's both there. With true, I think it was. I think with with true is an alias for tap, but both exist. So uh, we have also JSON. That's the wrong JSON, right? <laughs> Though man, sometimes JSON feels like this. Um, <laughs> So the JSON generator is more uh, customizable now. It has some um, more fields and uh, abilities to exclude things. And I advise looking at the API for for the details. Just let you know that let you uh, I want to let you know there is a inbuilt JSON serializer in Groovy, which is actually quite good and not uh, not slow at all. And I personally prefer it much over the one from Google. Um, but uh, <laughs> if you, uh, it also allows you to do some transformations now, converters, and all this. We, we extended this API a little bit to make it even more powerful. Like if you want to convert URLs in a certain format, uh, or only print a partial of it, or uh, you have a custom class that you want to convert. You can do this now easily. You, the JSON, uh, but you should look at in this here the uh, last line, for example. You give in a person, which is just an object. So basically, we are uh, serializing a person to JSON here. And this is not just simply write out JSON, this needs conversion of dates, this needs conversion of subtypes maybe, and you can do this now outside if you want to. Um, for reading, uh, no. Partially yes, but it's, it's still in work. It's it's a much harder problem, you know. <laughs> yes, I, I'm pretty sure this will come in in the near future. But right now, uh, people concentrated more on writing out. So, like, I have an object, and I want to give this uh, information to my JavaScript client. So, write out. That was the uh, first and foremost important uh, message for, for us. And of course, you want to have the way back too, but we don't have the, con the structure yet for this. I, I'm sure this will come soon. It's, if you have one thing, you want the other, and then somebody will, will start writing it. <laughs> then uh, we have something new called AST macros. So, the uh, AST is um, basically the structure of a program we compile in Groovy. Um, I don't want to go too much in details in, into the dozens of expressions and statements uh, that are used for, for everything that would fill easily a workshop, not even a talk. <laughs> so, so, um, which we did, by the way, too, already. In, if you want to, can you can provide something like that in the workshop? But no. <coughs> I didn't say anything. Um, <laughs> just, just, just kidding. What you normally have with AST transformations is you want... AST transformations are transforming your code. For example, adding a to-string method, adding a equals in ha or a hash code method. There are most simple versions. Or just reacting uh, or just take with, for example, a with could be, or tab could be an AST transformation in theory. You have to have a way to recognize, oh, yes, uh, there is my uh, key method that starts the transformation, for example, uh, and I want to react to that. Usually, you annotate your class with, with uh, the uh, AST transformation, like here, it would be add method. But we have different versions where you don't need to annotate, which is the global ones and the local ones. But 
I said I don't want to go too much in detail. I, I, uh, there are many talks about these kinds of things. I cannot go and <laughs> explain everything so here. Um, it's just let it see as a teaser <laughs> that we can do things like that. Important is if you want to add a method, like a simple method that co is called get message and that is returning 42. You have to write code like this. It's basically you want to have a return statement which returns a constant called 42. You have to create a node that is representing the method. It has parameters and it has the code itself. And then you need to add that node to the class as well. That's not so bad, but it's already lots of code and difficult to understand code. So with macros, this is made a little bit easier. So if you compare, we had here new return statement with a new constant expression 42, and now we have macro return 42. This return 42 is already doing this. This is the constant 42. Before we had here constant expression with a string constant 42. And we had a return statement here in this one. And before we had to write new return statement. So you save a little bit code with this. You can make your, you can use code to write your AST transformations in a form that is directly representing the code you want to produce. There are different variants, and I uh, suggest looking at the API what exactly they do. <clears throat> but is it enough to just return a constant here? I want to return maybe a variable or something like this. Maybe I want to make an MD5 coding, encoding method for string field. So I can uh, MD5 method, uh, an MD5 method, sorry, and um, so what I want to do is write me a method that will call the message digest, get the MD5 decoder instance, and then uh, encode my value that I gave in into bytes. Give, get me the hex code of this and give me all that as a string out. Uh, yes. As far as I know. Dollar V is, a, is from the new macro system. It's a method, actually, similar to the macro method. Dollar V is substitute this reference with whatever I did mean. So in here, you see in the second line, I uh, define a variable expression that is actually accessing a field. And, um, based, and, and then I can use it in my digest method, uh, in my digest call. <clears throat> and I'm not limited to, uh, this version is basically make me a, uh, make me the code block that would go in a method, but I'm not limited to this. I can make whole classes with the macro. For this, the macro method doesn't work anymore so well, uh, so we have this macro class here. So uh, Basically, you have three elements. You have the macro call to make expressions, you have the dollar $v for sub substitutions, and you have the macro class for complete class structures. Of course, you can combine them. You can do substitutions with dollar $v in a macro class, and you can macro calls in, in, the, in there. Well, they may, it doesn't make sense, but you can make dollar $v calls in a macro, <laughs> of course. Now everyone is probably totally confused. <laughs> Nobody has any idea what this one <laughs> is about. Sorry? Yes. 
who here did ever try to write, in, write an AST transformation in Groovy? Ah, okay. And who thinks this macro system will help him in the future to smaller the code? Then it's a full success, I would say. <laughs> So you can um, just to make an example. Uh, let's say we want to make a with lock, and normally you have a try or lock your lock, then and finally you unlock again, and in between you have some codes, uh, some code block or something like that. So if your code is the code block that is supposed to be executed as uh, under lock, we have it here as a closure, which is given through the with lock here, the curly braces part. And then we can, with our macro method, we can directly write our try, our finally, and then have a bit substitution in there, and we are done. It looks uh, pretty, it looks already very much like what we wanted to have. We have the body, which is the closure, closure expression, which is representing the closure. We have the variable for the lock, the lock var, and then we can call methods on it. Should it be? Really? Yeah. Really? Okay. I always put it in the try, actually. <laughs> Doesn't hurt normally. <laughs> you can make your own custom with lock and do it right there. <laughs> <laughs> So, and of course, you can do um, stupid things like you want to make a, something that uh, is executing like one plus one to three, and <laughs> you can basically. Most important is here that you can um, move the code outside of this a at AST transformated annotated class, it's not restricted to that. You can make your helper classes and you can still call macro in there. Then you can make uh, things like um, you can match expressions, for example. Uh, you can say, whenever I see a one plus one, I replace it with a three. Because one plus one is, of course, three. Um, but it's called choking transformation. <laughs> it's, it's not to be taken serious here. Important is, um, worth, worth to note here is that not only define, do I define uh, with macro an expression, we had this before with constants, this one is with one plus one, a more complex one. Uh, more important is this AST matcher matches, which takes expressions and matches them against the other expressions and uh, met, it's, it's giving true if this fits. So if I can, with this if, I can test, do I have a one plus one here? Or I could test, do I have a call to super here? Or I could, uh, I could test, do I call a closure here? Things like that. And then substitute it. For example, uh, try to inline the code or do something totally different. Add locking around it, whatever. And I have um, placeholders that I can use to match just everything. Like I have an something plus something and then I want to do something with that. Um, well, I have, for example, a calculation of p in one expression plus one. Um, okay, calculation of p in one expression probably doesn't work, um, but you know what I mean. It's maybe a method call or something like that. <laughs> Then I want to match that, you know. How do I match that? It's, it's some complex expression, maybe. Maybe two complex expressions. Maybe it's up in the tree. Maybe it's deep down in the tree. So I want 
only to say something plus something. And then I want to do something with it. For example, replace the plus with two times the same, if it's the same. Then I can do this with uh, defining uh, constraints. And I can say, well, A is my placeholder. So I don't want to do A plus A here. I don't want to produce code that does A plus A. I want to match against something that will plus two expressions. And then match against it. No, it's global. Only global? No, no, no both. both. They are actually global AST transformations themselves. I'm always a bit careful with adding global AST transformations because, well, they are global. Global things are not so good because they tend to obstruct things. But sometimes, in rare cases, like this one, <laughs> And then, why do I have a parrot here? Who knows why? <laughs> okay, so there's a new part of a groovy. Um, in this car, we called it parrot. I don't know why Daniel had this idea to call it parrot. The step back story, I actually don't know. I should ask him one time. It's, you know it? Ah, right. <laughs> so, for those that didn't hear, so, and it's, uh, we migrate from Antle 2 to Antle 4 as a parser generator. And, of course, Antle 4 parser is supposed to say everything just the same way as Antle 2. So, repeat like a parrot. That's why it's called parrot. <laughs> and I think in the history of Groovy, this is the fourth or fifth parser we have. <laughs> the, the, all the other parsers we basically had before 1.0. The current parser did hold a very long time. But, um, you know, until 2 is quite the old technology and the parser did grow biologically, I would say, and um, which equals to now unmaintainable. <laughs> it's, it did get very difficult to do changes there and we needed also some more powerful abilities of the parser, which until for this does give us. And then we decided to introduce some constructs that um, those old Java developers uh, may miss we did, and we didn't support before. Like, for example, the do while loop. We had while loops in there, but no do while loops because of uh, parser problems. Um, or classical array initializers. What you had to do before is make a list of one, two, and then cast it to int array or assign it to an int array variable or something like that. Now you don't. You just write it like in Java if you want. If you really want that. If really, really want that. I mean. I personally like working with arrays still, but I'm also doing bytecode stuff, you know. <laughs> uh, a long time ago, we had an identity comparison, which in Java is the equals equals. In Groovy, equals equals calls some complex codes, which sometimes calls equals, sometimes calls compared to, and sometimes just stays with a built-in code. This triple equals is now the equivalent to the double equals in Java. It's a very important thing here because was I writing code and I said, I want to jump out of this method if this variable is not the instance of this class. And then you have to set everything in parents. No, okay. And negate before. Now, just negate before the instance of. 
it's not instance of. It's, it's, that is clear. We have some similar operator in Groovy, with not, not for instance of, but for checking ranges or elements in lists and such, which is in. And so it was very apparent that if we do it for one, we do it for this one as well. So we also support not in now. It has exactly the same logic as the in hat, just it negates the result. And uh, how many of you do know safe navigation? Yeah, it's quite many. So normally in Groovy what I can do is I have object, I want to ask it for the value of a property. The object may be now, so I can write the question mark before the dot and then I get null and not a null pointer exception. But with indexes this didn't work before. Now you can write the question mark before and if you have an object in there you can do something like uh, list, question mark, index, like here. <laughs> My property, and then maybe question mark dot for the next property. Um, you, you can, of course, uh, get overhead with those things. Uh, important is we have it before the index, and the index is not working only for lists, it's also for maps. In the case of map, we ask for the key. And uh, we ask, with the index, we ask for the T, and then we check the return value. Other small uh, things are like try with resources. I'm personally not a big fan of try with resources. It can make the code more clear in rare cases, but sadly only rare cases. So you would have maybe code like this where you have where you read in a file and you want to write it into another file and use gzip on it. And you do all the juggling with the buffers and all that. Well, in Groovy now you can do, define your sources just in, like in Java, only that you don't have to de necessarily declare them, they are automatically declared for you, just like, the for, uh, like for the for loop in Groovy. And of course, Thanks to GDK methods existing since I think 1.0, you don't have to do the buffer juggling as well. That's not new. The tribe of resources is new. Who's working with Java 8 and Lambdas? Uh -huh. Not so many. I would have expected there would be more already. The others are still on Java 7 and older? <laughs> Gro to oh, wow, they're on Groovy. Yes. <laughs> yes, but you can use streams in Groovy too. Uh, only that if you come from Java and or you see examples in Java about how those streams are used and they're usually using the new lambda syntax. And if you then copy and paste this code in Groovy, right now it fails. Why? Because it doesn't understand the lambdas. The lambdas look very similar to our closures, uh, but they are not quite the same. Now with the new parrot parser, coming in Groovy 2.6 by the way, which I hope is very soon, you can actually write lambdas. And all variants of it. You can do uh, with types, without types, with blocks, uh, without blocks. And actually, since we have implicit returns, you don't have to write return every, if, everywhere just because to make some curly braces there. Um, you can give default values, which you cannot do with lambdas. Uh, you can reference static methods. You can reference instance methods with the column column annotation uh, notation. You can um, you can uh, sorry. You can re uh, reference instances. <clears throat> Sorry. 
Uh, you can reference instance methods um, by, by the variables, for example. So n column column clone of to reference the clone of the instance method clone of that is on, on uh, of this n inst, uh, which is an instance of name. Um, and then you can reference constructors. There you have actually two choices. You can do new or you can do new instance. Technically, new instance is not a constructor reference. It is a method reference because new instance is a method that we provide to create a new instance of a class. You can do it for normal classes. You can do it for arrays if you want to. And then you can combine things, of course. Uh, you, you can say, oh, okay, I can get me a constructor reference from, from, uh, from an animal, which is a canonical annotated class. So that means it has a tuple constructor. It means it has a constructor that takes one string to, put in, to fill in kind, for example. It has another constructor which would put null in kind as well. And I can, with this reference, I can actually call, uh, I can first get the reference, then call the constructor with it. Uh, I can also uh, directly call it on the reference if I want to. I, I don't know if Java can do that. I think Java cannot do that. The, the last line the, with the cat version. I think that's not allowed in Java. So we are actually going a bit beyond because we can and we find it cool. Um, <laughs> many things we find cool, Java developers, especially those from the JDK, don't find cool at all. <laughs> but we are groovy if we are not Java. <clears throat> Coming uh, to another part, it's, it's the Elvis assignment. Uh, you may know the Elvis expression with the, with the question mark column. Here in this example, for example, if I have here name equals to name and then my Elvis operator uh, unknown, it means set name to unknown if name is um, null or something like that. We can simplify this now since we are operate on the same, so we can have an assignment here. You save a little bit. On code. Java doc comments can be saved now in the AST and ava made available at runtime with the at groovy. Write code that gets through annotations uh, the, the Java. For example, if you want to write some help system or some, some more helpful error messages about. Uh, or get information about the specific methods just in the runtime. So, um, I'm, I'm sorry about getting very fast through these slides. I'm open to questions if you want to come here. Sadly, the time is already over, which is explaining why I had to go fa so fast through everything. <laughs> I suggest if you want to, to know more details, just come to me and ask me. Or Paul, for example, he really knows a lot too. <laughs> Thank you very much.